My dear brothers and sisters of the work of God, this video is about a reflection on the birth of Christ. It was filmed at the holy name of Mary Parish during adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. It covers the theological aspects of the Incarnation, the Nativity, and the establishment of the Kingdom of Heaven within us, with the birth of Jesus in our hearts. It will contain as well a short testimony of the life in Christ by Joseph of Jesus and Mary of the work of God Apostolate. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. We have known this Jesus truly present at the altar in the Blessed Sacrament. Let us pray to the Holy Spirit that the words that the Lord is putting in my heart tonight will be full of light and that they will give us benefits for our spiritual life. If today you hear his word, hearten not your hearts. Praise be our Lord Jesus Christ. So we will talk about the birth of Christ. We will go through some important points concerning the incarnation, the birth of Christ in Bethlehem, and then we'll meditate on the spiritual birth of Christ in our hearts. At the Annunciation, the Spirit of the Word of God descends on Mary's womb. When the will of God the Father was communicated to Mary by the Archangel Gabriel in his words, she responds, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. In other words, let it be done to me according to the will of God. At her consent, the Blessed Virgin Mary conceives the Son of God in her womb by the action of God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit overshadows Mary. A new creation takes place. The creation of grace. A creation that won't fail the divine will. Since the first spiritual creation, the angels failed God because they rebelled against him. Then the creation of Adam and Eve failed God through the original sin committed by our first parents. But Mary becomes the mother of God. In this new creation of grace, she becomes also the mother of all the children of God because Christ is the head of the human race and we are parts of his body. Mary was virgin before the incarnation, during and after the birth of Jesus because he is the light of the world. She is a spiritual vessel, vessel of honor, singular vessel of devotion, the Immaculate Conception. The Word of God, the light of the world, entered her. So she was undefiled. Nine months later, at the birth of Christ, that same light shone brightly, coming from that holy lamp of the light of God, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Jesus was born without affecting her virginity. She remains the spotless virgin. The announcements of the birth of our Lord reveal to the humble shepherds of the area and to the Magi. The three wise men coming from the pagan lands in the east 
and they worshipped the king. Jesus didn't come directly to God's chosen people, the Jews. The priests or the Pharisees, the religious of those times, because they were blind to the spiritual light of God. Christ is born. The Holy Scriptures are fulfilled. Isaiah 9 verse 2, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. To those who live in the shadow of death, light has dawned. So the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We hear in John 1 verse 12, To all who received Him, who believed in His name, He gave the power to become children of God. And the angels praise God, saying in Luke 2 verse 14, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of good will. And I quote this old translation of the Word of God by St. Jerome into Latin, because the new Bible changed men of good will to other not so spiritual meanings. Now we begin to look into the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts which we need to understand very deeply to allow the kingdom of heaven to be established in our hearts. Because the Lord said, the kingdom of heaven is very near. It is actually within you. It is truly the reign in the heart. Jesus comes as king to reign. We celebrate Christmas every year and rejoice going through all these holy events that took place 2022 years ago in Bethlehem. But Jesus is God. He lived as a human being and died for our sins in Calvary. He accomplished the redemption of the human race. First, the Spirit of God became flesh. Now Jesus becomes the bread of life, his body, blood, soul, and divinity in one of his greatest miracles. In his eternal steps, Jesus is born once again in the altar during the consecration of the bread by the holy hands of the priest. He comes to the altar as bread, as food for our souls. He then comes to the church, to my heart, to your hearts. God enters his temple, offering us an opportunity to worship him and to keep him. Unfortunately, we don't meditate this mystery. We ignore him and he has to leave us very shortly. Jesus said in John 14, verse 23, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him. And we will come to him and will make our abode with him. Since the eternal word is God, God becomes the bread of life, the Holy Eucharist. Then we can surely understand this passage as, if anyone loves me, he will keep my bread, the Holy Eucharist. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and will make our home with him. We remain being temples of the Holy Spirit since baptism, with the difference that God has established himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in a new throne within us. This is true life in God. But we must leave these concepts in our hearts. When we receive the Holy Eucharist, even if for just a few moments, we are transformed by God in a manger with Jesus, in a living host of His body, blood, soul, and divinity. We are transformed into a chalice of the precious blood of Jesus. 
we are transformed into a tabernacle of the true presence of Jesus, who is God, the Holy Eucharist, in our hearts. We are transformed into a son of his light. We are transformed into a mirror of his holiness. Do we keep the eternal word of God in the form of bread in our hearts? Do we worship him in our hearts? Amos 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, and I will send forth a famine into the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. We must hunger for that word, for that bread. We must thirst for that precious blood. Once we receive the Holy Eucharist, we must keep it in our hearts. Jesus is here, but he was put in this altar for us to receive that food, so that as we receive that food, we worship him in our hearts. Luke 10, verse 27, the law of God says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But God complains in Isaiah 55, verse, verses 8 to 9, my thoughts are not your thoughts, your ways are not my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So, we must think like God and live in Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. Let us pray for the Lord to increase our faith so that we can say like St. Paul, Galatians 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And now I will give you my short testimony about this life in Christ, this life in the Eucharist, this life that all of us here adoring Him are trying to find that life in Jesus. I reconverted to my Catholicism about 30 years ago. And from that moment, I started receiving Jesus daily in the Holy Eucharist. I also started a very sincere devotion to Our Lady and to the Passion of Our Lord, the expression of His divine mercy. I attended one Marian retreat in Melbourne. There was a moment when, for the first time, I saw the sun dancing on the sky. And I personally had an apparition of Our Lady in the sky. The sun was over her mouth. She looked so beautiful. I wanted the sun to move away so that I could see her mouth. But instead, the sun stayed and moved in such a way that Our Lady's jaw dropped. like that, and then I was afraid. A beam of light came from her mouth. It surrounded me. There was lightning, thunder, flashes of lights of different colors. I was like in another world, having an ecstasy of love, and I heard for the first time the voice of Our Lady in my heart saying, I am the mother of grace. I am giving my grace to all those who love me. As a result, I was kind of drunk in the spirit, an experience which lasted for about a week. From that moment onwards, I received an anointing of the Holy Spirit. My mind was open to the Holy Scriptures. I started having all types of visions. The Lord also started giving me messages, which I published in my website, The Work of God, and in my YouTube channel, The Work of God. My visions include seeing daily souls in purgatory. 
souls in need, astral visions, intellectual visions, etc. Most of my visions are intellectual, that is, they are formed in the mind, where I see pictures made with light. And God is so perfect. There is a saying, a picture paints a thousand words. And so it happens with those visions from God. All this that I am saying to you is to invite you to live a life closer to God, to live in His presence. We Catholics are the most fortunate people in the world for having the sacraments, for having our priests. They look to us as normal human beings, but they are the only ones with the privilege to bring about the birth of the world the birth of Christ as the living bread that comes down from heaven. Our Lady has told me that we should look at them as divine creatures because they make it possible for Christ to come daily to the altar to establish his kingdom in our hearts. In one vision, I saw the priest during the consecration, but he was not holding the host nor the chalice with wine. He was actually holding and lifting baby Jesus. In another vision I saw a manger above the altar. Our Lady was kneeling down adoring Jesus in the crib. In those early years of my profound reconversion, I yearned for the Spirit of God to possess me. Then I had a vision of an angel coming to me in a dark corridor. He was full of light. He was hovering above the ground. I was a child in the vision. I wanted to talk to the angel, but he kept coming towards me. He penetrated my soul, and I saw a big explosion of light within me. God was in me. I was in God. I felt such great pleasure inside, such joy, as if God was putting all the pleasures of the world into one, in an ecstasy of love. On another Eucharistic vision, I saw a host rolling on my tongue, as a son of light, and as it reached my palate. And I started to swallow it. There was an explosion of light. And I entered into an ecstasy of love again, with long-term effect. One day I was praying, Jesus and Mary, I love you, save souls. I repeated that several times. Then I saw our Lord and Our Lady sitting on a couch. They were smiling at me. The lunch was my heart. Another time I was driving to work, I was saying to the Lord Jesus, I desire and I long ardently to be always in you. I was riding on the road. He was there. I saw through. The Lord granted me that I would see like a hole in my head and then as if eyes opened there, and I could see perfectly there. I saw Jesus sitting on the passenger side of my van, dressed in white, smiling very happy with me. I am overwhelmed by all these beautiful encounters with the Lord. But going back in time about 30 years ago, I was in the Peshwood Parish, in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. I used to help Father Garland print the bulletins for Sunday Masses. I was alone in the school library, and while the bulletins were ready, I was praying the Holy Rosary in front of the statue of Our Lady carrying the child Jesus. Suddenly, the statue became alive, and the child Jesus descended from the arms of his mother and immediately he hid behind her. Then he came out again 
as children do when they play hide and seek. I was so happy with the love that Jesus showed me as a child. I used to pray to him, perhaps not enough. In fact, I didn't give him much credit. I feel that I ignored him. So about three years ago, I saw him again. This time he was holding a brush. He was sitting on a bench. And in front of him, there was a rack with about five shelves forming like a triangle, like that. On top of those shelves, there were about 80 open cans of paint of different colors. The lids were not there. Jesus was looking at me. In my heart, he was offering himself to me. He was ready and very eager to start painting my life and to be my little heavenly friend. So I realized that I ignored him for so many years after the first vision. I was very sorry. But he started showing me many visions from then onwards, more than 50 up to now, in which he has revealed to me the power of his divinity. One day I was praying, and the enemy put blasphemies in my mouth. So I prayed and I said, not him again, Lord. I was powerless. But suddenly, the child Jesus appeared on a cloud, making a throne. And it looked as if he had to rush to help me because he was accommodating a big solid crown on his head with his left hand. I thought it was very funny. And indeed, he gives me many visions from time to time. Some make me laugh. Some of them simply show us his innocence. And they are a call to us to be like little children. But despite his innocence, Jesus is the same powerful God yesterday, today, and forever. It is very good to have the friendship of the little child Jesus. Jesus says in Matthew 19, verse 14, Let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. A recent impressive vision was given to me when I asked him to cast down devils from the world. Well, in fact, I do daily an exorcism, and I cast out devils with him. And I asked him. So he appeared in a place full of light. He was standing very threatening. He could have been about four years old, holding a sword about two feet long by about five centimeters wide with a sharp angle at the end. And about three meters away from him, there was a dark hole about two meters in diameter. It looked exactly as a black hole. On top of it, there was a very high whirlwind full of evil spirits being sucked by that hole into hell. The child Jesus showed me his power as God. Well, I am telling you all these secrets of the King, these consolations of the spiritual life because we must lead the word of God. We must lead the Holy Eucharist. It is God with us. He will reward our faith. John 3 verse 11. Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still some people do not accept our testimony. I want to finish this talk by saying this short prayer, which is a spiritual communion that I have received in my heart. In fact, I do it very often and many times a day. I will say three times so that you can leave these two in your heart. 
Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Eucharist, enter me, repose in me, stay with me. You in me, I in you, the two of us, one. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with the Blessed Virgin Mary in my heart. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Eucharist, enter me, repose in me, stay with me. You in me, I in you, the two of us, one. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with the Blessed Virgin Mary in my heart. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Eucharist, enter me, repose in me, you in me, I in you, the two of us one. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with the Blessed Virgin Mary in my heart. Amen. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to pray that you also receive that little manger in your hearts. That every time you think about Jesus, you can see him within you, in the altar of your heart, the throne of God. He wants to live in you. So may your house be also a little Bethlehem and you have a happy and very holy Christmas. God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.